Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of our road trip across Slovenia and Croatia. If you haven't seen episode 1, click the link above to view it first. We choose which road to take first thing in the morning. We leave Izola in Slovenia after breakfast, and after passing through passport control and a nice 70 mile drive, we arrive in Ravinj, Croatia, shortly after lunch. Surrounded by the beautiful Adriatic Sea and a 14 island archipelago, Rovinj is a Croatian tourist and active fishing port on the Istrian Peninsula west coast. The old town is built on a hill, with homes packed down to the seafront. A maze of cobblestone lanes leads to St. Euphemia's hilltop church, whose tall spire dominates the skyline. Rovinj was one of the most prominent cities in Istria, controlled by the Republic of Venice from 1283 to 1797. Three town gates were built during this time, and Rovinj was fortified with two rows of defensive walls, the remnants of which may still be seen today. Because the town is legally bilingual, Croatian and Italian, both town names are officially unequal, Rovinj and Rovinjo. The town has a casual, elegant, relaxed feeling. It is full of wonderful restaurants, taverns and cafes, including some of the nicest we've seen on our whole trip. Food is excellent, with a strong Italian influence due to history and vicinity. Rovinj is the ideal spot to relax and have a lovely dinner paired with fantastic local wines and olive oil from the Istrian Peninsula. At a reasonable price, fish, seafood and pasta are at the top of every restaurant's menu.
At night, the town comes alive with live music and people everywhere. We had fantastic weather the next day, as is typical in this area. The weather is dry, pleasant, and there is always a gentle breeze blowing. Mediterranean at its finest. We decided to take a boat tour across the islands using one of the several taxi boats available. There are many different excursions to choose from, ranging from full day trips with fish barbecue on the beach and snorkeling included, to simply a ride through some of the archipelago's islands for a couple of hours, which is what we picked. They take you on a boat excursion through several of the islands for roughly $14 per person, alcohol included. We thought it was a good deal. On the northern side of the city, there is a very nice open food and gift market that is open every day. Dry figs, honey and local truffles, yep, you heard correctly, I said truffles, are offered, as are excellent olive oils and local wines. I highly recommend you try the white Malvasia, typical from the Istrian Peninsula, a dry white wine that pairs perfectly well with fish. Perfetto, buono, tartufo, è di Istria. È di Istria, è <laughs> grande. We really enjoyed visiting Rovinj. Friendly people, beautiful narrow cobblestone streets packed with restaurants and bars. Touristic, yes, but elegantly balanced. In our opinion, a must visit if you come to Croatia. Tomorrow it will be another day and we're heading south to Zadar. We have a long way to go along the coast tomorrow and I bet it'll take us a few hours to get there. If you haven't seen episode 1, click on the link to watch it now and please subscribe so you don't miss the next three episodes of our Croatian road trip. Having your support makes all the difference for us to continue to making travel content. This is Mark from Go Travel Planet signing off. See you on our next episode. Until then, ciao, alla prossima!